We already know from the distributive property, if you watch my previous video on algebra, you would know that if I were to be multiplying a with y plus z, okay, I could distribute it uh, very easily by um, multiplying a to both terms, that's a y plus a z. Uh, if you'd like to know the proof behind this, you could go watch that video. Uh, but now I'm going to be focusing on something a bit more complex. This one, you're taking a single value and multiplying it with two terms, pretty standard stuff. But what if you're multiplying two terms with two terms? So x plus w times y plus z. Oh, now it's a bit, it's a bit uh, messy right now. It's a bit complex. So how to, to deal with this? Well, one way we could simplify this is that what we could do, we can let uh, x plus w equal a. So essentially, we're going to do something like the Trojan horse, where we're going to disguise x plus w as a. So we're going to collapse it and make this equal to a. So let's do that. We're going to substitute it as a. And now it's simpler. So yeah, it's simpler now. So we could perform regular distrib distribution of the distributive property. So that becomes a y plus, uh, wait, no, what? That's not plus, plus a z. Okay, so this is pretty standard stuff. But now, because a, let's recall, because a was actually x plus w, we can now substitute x plus w as a. So we will end up getting y times x plus w plus z times x plus w. So we've, so it's like, oh, surprise, we're not actually a, we were, we were, we were x plus w in disguise. So it's kind of like that. So now, all to do is apply the distributive property to both of these terms. So then I get yx plus yw. This should be plus. Uh, yeah, then plus uh, zx plus zw. There. Um, yeah, so that's essentially a way to chain, to, uh, to, to expand the, exp the multiplication, the product of x plus w multiplied by y plus z. However, this took about, you know, took quite a number of steps. Is there a way to do it more in a more direct fashion to, re to get from here to here? Well, let's look at a few patterns that we see. So why don't we get rid of all the intermediate steps for now? And we can see a few patterns. We can see that they're making a few combinations. We can see that, um, uh, we can see over here this is zx, which means x multiplies by z. So I could draw this arc. Then it says here zy, so, sorry, sorry not zy, it says here zw. So z multiplied by w, so that's another combination that was made. Then it says over here yx, meaning y multiplied by x, so that was another combination made. Then you can also see here yw, so y multiplied by w, that's another combination made. Thus, we can pretty much just get this result if we just make all these different combinations. We make x multiply by, by y, then x multiplies by z, then you go to w, multiplies by y, multiplied by z. Make every possible combination with, from one guy here, multiplied by one guy here. That's pretty much it. Now, um, if I were to show you a way to put this in an acronym form uh what i could do i could use the acronym foil so this i could call this the foil method so well, what does foil stand for so what i'm doing if i want to show you every possible combination i could make to multiply these two terms with each other all i have to do is this so first i multiply the first guys as you saw earlier x multiplied by y so I'm multiplying the first guys, right? X and Y are both the first guys of their own ex respective expression. So X, Y is multiplying the first two guys. Then O stands for outer. So I'm multiplying the outers. So I multiply the, out the two out outer guys. X and Z are both outer guys because, you know, they're all in the outer section. So it's going to be X times Z. Then I will have to be multiplying uh, the inner guys now to make the next combination inner guys w y they're both in the inside inner guys so yeah that's w times y then i have to do the last guys the final guys which essentially are um 
which essentially are W and Z because they're both the final guys of each of their expressions. So W and Z are the final guys. Thus, we got back to where we started, the exact same combinations we've been making. So yeah, this is the FOIL method where we do the first, the first ones, X and Y, the outer ones, X and Z, the inner ones, W and Y, and the last ones, W and Z. This is the FOIL method for expanding uh, the brackets between two expressions. And I would say this is a pretty cool method. It's very useful in algebra, but maybe you're not satisfied with this method. Maybe this method seems too complex and too complicated. How about I could prove it with maybe some, uh, maybe I could prove it geometrically. So if you remember the expression, it was x plus w times y plus z, right? And any um, product, any multiplication, you could say that this was uh, actually just them multiplying to each other, which we were doing the entire time. They're multiplying. And because they're multiplication, any type of product or multiplication can be expressed in area. You know, it's like how uh, 3 times 4 equals 12. You're drawing a line of 3 units long, drawing another line of 4 units long, and the area created by them makes it a rectangle, and this would be 12. You know, 3 times 4, 12. So you can kind of think of it as multiplication as area. So why don't we make like an area with both of these numbers multiplying to each other? So first we create a triangle, a rectangle, sorry, of length x plus w, then the other side, the height, would be um, y plus z. So now we have it here. So um, now we have this one. So we can actually change x plus w to just x and w. So let's just draw a barrier for where x ends and w begins. And, and y plus z, let's just draw a barrier for when y ends and z begins. So over here. Then we can extend these barriers to make it like this and this. And now we have four uh, we have four sections to a rectangle. So this section is going to be is, is x long and y tall. So that's going to be x, y. This section is going to be w long and y tall. That's w y this section is x long and z tall that's z x and this section is w long and z tall that's going to be z w and there again we did the exact same thing all the different combinations uh we we did the first ones x and y the first ones x and y x y see the first ones we did the outer ones x and z which are the outer ones outer ones you could see here x times z zx and we also did the inner ones uh w and y see w y w and y the inner ones and we also did the last ones w and z zw so yeah the foil method is proven using geometry see any kind of multiplication can just be done using area so yeah foil Essentially, that's how you expand the brackets. And you can also apply this logic to probably just, um, you could also apply it to maybe things like, I don't know, like trinomials multiplied by binomials. You know, you, it doesn't have to be just two terms multiplied by two terms. It could be, I, I don't know, like A plus B multiplied by C plus D plus E. All you have to remember is that you just have to take A multiply to every individual one on the other side, then take B, multiply to every individual one on the other side. So that's pretty much how you do it. So that is was the FOIL method, uh, and it was derived from the distributive property and also geometry. So hope you understand how to do this and apply this to your algebra.